Okay, now this, uh, the point which we're going to make next are really, really important because the previous videos could very easily give someone the, uh, the uh, misunderstanding that we don't care about sin at all. <laughs> that, you know, it's just okay to sin. So let's go to, I don't want anybody to get the wrong impression, so let's back up and go to Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and 10. Uh, verse 8, um, For by grace are ye saved, through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Um, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Okay. To me, if you really un want to understand the relationship between grace, faith, and works, it, you find it in these three verses. In Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, it says we're saved by the grace of God through our faith in Jesus Christ, uh, not by any religious work we do. Uh, it's a gift from God, and we, that way we can't ever boast, tell God that He owes us, or we deserve heaven. That's the point too of 8 and 9. But the following verse, verse 10, it puts it all in perspective and it tells you the real purpose of works. So read verse 10 again, okay? Verse 10 again? Yeah. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Okay. So we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus. In other words, you're born again. He made you into a child of God. But why? For the purpose of to do good works. Okay? So listen, we're not telling you not to do good things. We're not telling you go and continue sinning. We're saying the opposite. But I want you to know the relationship we are not saved because we do good things. We're not saved because we're religious. But because we're saved, that's the whole point of being saved, is to serve the Lord, to do His will and be His servant. So in verse 10, you see, as Christians, we're called to do good works, but not to get saved. All right? That's right. All right. Uh, so, but now let's go on, um, and I want everybody to be able to um, now just know that we can rest in Jesus and be assured that we are saved, and it's all settled. So let's go to let's go to uh, our Romans eleven twenty nine. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. Okay, are without repentance. It means God will not repent. I'm talking about our repentance. God will not repent. That means God's not going to change his mind. The gift is what? Um, salvation. Salvation. The gift God gives us is eternal life. That's salvation. Okay? And he said, it says it's without repentance. God will not change his mind. Another modern translation says the gift and calling of God is irrevocable. God won't revoke it. So that's good news. That's if, you ever, if you ever want to hear good news, that's good news. Mm -hmm. Once we're saved, God won't revoke it. Okay? That's an eternal security verse. Though. Yes, that's exactly what we're talking about right now. Let's go to Ephesians 4.30 now. That what that says there goes with what Jesus said on the cross. It's finished. It's finished, right? Okay. Um, Ephesians chapter four, verse thirty. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Okay. So, when you got saved, when you were nineteen years old, God sealed you with the Holy Spirit. He put the Holy Spirit inside you and sealed it, and it's done. Sealed means it's permanent. That's good news. I mean, I'm happy about being saved, but I'm even happier knowing that I'm secure in it. I'm sealed. I can rest in it. It's, I'm, I have assurance because God said it's irrevocable. Can we go to John 10, 28 and 29? Yes. John. Um. 
And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Uh, here we have Jesus saying that He's got us in the palm of His hand. And He says that God the Father has us in the palm of His hand. So Jesus and the Father have us like this. It says no one, no one can pluck us out. This is another eternal security verse that's telling me I don't need to worry. I can't lose my salvation. Uh, and I can't get out either. No one can get me out. No one even includes me, doesn't it? Amen. Okay. Now let's go to uh, Hebrews 13.5. Hebrews 13.5. God came down and did what He did on the cross. It was not in vain. <laughs> Hebrews 13.5 Let your conversation be without covetedness and be content with such things as ye have. For He hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. You see, when you got born again when you were 19 years old, you have this assurance that God's never going to leave you or forsake you. So, uh, since you were 19 years old, you, you've sinned. But He didn't forsake you. And uh, there, some people have uh, really gone astray. Not only before we got saved, but after we got saved. Sometimes we go astray. But we've got this promise from God that He's not going to leave us or forsake us. So, you know, it, it, a person can really be joyful when they get saved. But even better than that to me is knowing that saved is past tense. He's not going to revoke it, and he's never going to leave me. It's permanent. Yeah. Amen. So uh, I don't have to, to maintain my salvation. I don't have to keep um, my salvation. I... I there's, you don't have to do any religious work. You don't have to stop sinning to get saved. You don't have to do any religious work, and you don't have to stop sinning to stay saved. Because your salvation is not based on your righteousness. Your salvation is based on the righteousness of Jesus Christ. That's what saved you. So there was no work I could do that could save me, and there's no work that I can do that can keep me saved. Yes. And there's nothing you can do to lose your salvation because he won't leave you and you can't get plucked out of his hand it's irrevocable that's good news that is good news okay we'll move on to the next video